There are literally thousands of varieties of rice. From the foothills of the Himalaya come the long, lightly perfumed basmati grains. Tar baby-like sticky rices from the patties of Japan. The amazing self-saucing arborio rices from northern Italy. Thailand's jasmine offers its heady perfume at a fraction of basmati's price. And now appearing in a pioneer you, Spain's Valencia. We have Wahani, Texmati, Bella, Blue, Red, Black Japonica, Wild Rice, which isn't even really rice to begin with, it's an aquatic grass, and even White Rice. When it comes to rice cooking, there are only two questions you gotta ask. First, what's the grain length? And second, how is it processed? Each of the 10,000 plus different varieties of rice fall within three commercial classifications. Long grain, medium grain, and you guessed it, short grain. Short grain rices are grown mostly in Asia and California. And when cooked, these stubby little guys are sticky enough to be formed into sushi or picked up easily with chopsticks. In a strange double malapropian twist, short grain rices are often called sweet or glutinous rices, despite the fact that they don't taste sweet at all and they contain no gluten whatsoever. The starch coat on medium grain rices, like Italy's famed Arborio, can be coaxed right off of the grain, producing the characteristic creaminess of risotto and rice pudding. Now, although fluffy when first cooked, medium grain rices get sticky as they cool down. But since their starch doesn't crystallize, they're a good choice for salads and cold dishes. At four to six times longer than they are wide, long grain rices don't release starch into their surroundings the way medium or short grain rices do. So what do you get? Beautiful, fluffy, individual, relatively dry grains. In other words, American rice. Now, long grain rices are great all-purpose rices, except when it comes to cold dishes. See, the starch in these grains crystallizes when cooked and cooled, which results in rock-hard little grains. When reheated, though, the crystals do dissolve again. So, what is bad for, say, salad is good for fried rice. Once it's threshed off the ear, each grain is still encased in a husk. Remove the husk, and voila! brown rice. See, like most grains, the inner part of the kernel, or endosperm, is surrounded by a thin layer of bran, which is where most of the nutrients are. Since it's a tough little cuss, brown rice needs about three times as much water and time to cook as the same amount of white rice. The hassle's worth it, though, because brown rice has a great nutty flavor and a stronger nutritional punch than its buffed-up brother. It can be sold as is, or the bran can be rubbed off to reveal the pearly white underneath. White and converted rice will keep for years on the shelf, as long as you keep them in airtight containers with lids. I like these kind of big mouth jobbies, easy scooping. Now brown rice, on the other hand, is completely different matter, because remember, it's still got the bran on it, and the bran means oil, and oil will go rancid in just six months on the shelf. The answer is the freezer. In here, you can keep it for one to two years. But since fats oxidize and pick up off flavors, the thing to do is to keep it inside a Ziploc bag and then keep that inside another sealed container. Spoilage foiled again.